What screams I'm a hillbilly? I've lived in a rural area for a lot of my life and there is a brand of hillbilly here that is very definite. These are self-described hillbillies, they call themselves that and are proud of it. There are attributes that around here would cause a person, in passing, to say there goes a hillbilly but we don't mean it as a derogatory term and they don't take it that way. There's a pride these people have. They are almost always country, and by that I mean they listen to country music just about exclusively, wear cowboy boots or old beaten up work boots, sleeveless shirts for the guys, and either ball caps with some kind of automotive logo or cowboy hat. The women wear cut off short shorts, flip flops, tank tops and often wear blue eyeliner and shadow, but not always. A lot of them work in EMS, if they work. Most of the time they are smokers and then men chew snuff or tobacco. They often drive old beaten up trucks, maybe even have truck nuts, look it up, and nearly always the muffler is missing. They usually live in trailers parked in fields, have kids early and have several. They usually have a giant trampoline outside, I've no idea why, they just do, for the kids to play with them. There will almost always be junk in the yard including several broken down cars used for parting out. Probably a dog tied to the front porch, some kind of bully breed or large hunting dog. Usually there are blankets for curtains in the trailer, or they use the US flag. There are often toys like quads or little carts they can ride around in their yards, and there is often a fascination for revving engines and squealing tires on the road until they make smoke and black marks. There is a lot of beer at get-togethers, which happen often. There is a good chance there is no electricity, the further up our mountain you go, and that the kids will be dirty and barefoot if you see them in public. Some have dirt floor houses and no electricity but those homes have become fewer in the last 20 years. Some call themselves rednecks, some hillbillies, some both. In my experience they are in general down to earth folks, and if my car broke down in a so called hillbilly area they'd come out and fix it and get me on my way. The town I grew up in was up the mountain from my high school and I rode the mountain bus and the towny kids always thought less of us. Kids on my bus fought, swore, had sex, rubbed snuff, and had feuds with each other's families, but they left me alone because I was nice to everybody. They didn't bully anyone who didn't deserve it, lol. And, they were fiercely loyal to their family and friends. I'd feel so much more secure if I was dropped off in hillbilly country than in the middle of the city. So when I use the word hillbilly for these folks it's not a mean thing, they call themselves that and wear it as a label with pride but those are some of the main characteristics of our local brand of hillbilly. In other places I'm sure it will differ. My father was a hillbilly's hillbilly. I could write about his hillbilliness all night long. But I'll just share a couple of the incidents that scream Jed Clampett. My father, brother and myself were out building and repairing fence one day when the noon whistle blows. Come on boys, let's go eat lunch. Off to the house we head. My brother and I could eat like a hog so it was always a race to wash up and rush to the table just in case mom left something out on the table like crackers or biscuits to much on. Today was different. There was no trace of a meal. No hint that there was going to be one either. Shortly here comes Pops. My father was the type that you didn't eat when you're hungry, you ate when the clock said to eat. Breakfast is at 5 o'clock, lunch, supper, at 12 o'clock, and dinner at 6 o'clock. The look on his face when there was no meal ready was just priceless. He yells out, Hope, where's lunch? How am I to work these two lug nuts like burrows on empty stomachs? My mother yells back, There's no food in this house. Pops yells back, in an elevated and pissed off voice, well ain't this a hell of a time to say something. And all of a sudden he looks at me and says, he'll be right back and briskly heads for his bedroom. He was gone a very short time when he returned with his Browning 5 shot pump 12 gauge shotgun in one hand and a box of small game shells in the other. He throws the box of shells on the table and the shells roll all over. Then he grabs two shells and says, Jesus ate Christ. If you want it done, do it yourself. Come and Boyd, flush him out. He yells. Next thing you know, here comes Boyd doing a hundred headed for the door. Boyd was my father's dog he raised from a pup. He was a German short hair, grayish blue, and incredibly smart. The two were connected at the hips, and Boyd was one of the best bird pointers most people had ever seen with the ability to point six pheasants at once. 
Out the door they head. It wasn't he but maybe two or three minutes when we heard two shotgun blasts about ten seconds apart. My mother walks into the kitchen, hands me her favorite small knife and a stone and I start dressing the edge. We all three hear the door slam and here comes Boyd full speed ahead and man as he wound up. Dad walks up the stairs and over to the kitchen sink. Boyd is going ape shit and Pops yells to Boyd, hey. Go find your nuts Boyd and Boyd takes off. You see, Boyd had no nuts so Dad had a friend that made saddles make a set of leather balls that he would hide from Boyd to keep him occupied. Anyhow, Pops looks at my mum, throws two fat tree squirrels in the sink and very sternly says, make a meal, I've got more work than time so snappy please. And that's my story. That day was pan fried squirrel. And it was delicious. I'm proud to be a hillbilly. With that said, let's do away with many of the stereotypes. Hillbillies are not drunken buffoons with missing teeth and poor education. Forget about feuds starting over trivial matters and lasting for generations. What you see on TV is satire, parody and the last remnant of publicly acceptable prejudice left in America. Play on stereotypes of any other group in America and watch how fast your network gets boycotted and fined. But let's put Tim and Tickle on a show and reap the rewards. So what screams I'm a hillbilly? Independence. For the most part, we are not seeking handouts. We want what we earn and we'd rather earn whatever we get. We will help people in need if they ask, but when someone comes demanding entitlement, well, that dog don't haunt. If we do ask for help, you can bet we need it and we will do all that is in our power to repay the favor. We respect privacy as we want our own affairs not be broadcast for all the world. We may hang our laundry on a clothesline, but you better believe it's clean when we do. We don't tear our dirty laundry. Also, we know how to provide for our needs without money. I did read one response before posting that spoke of having fried squirrel for lunch. Well, squirrel, rabbit, deer, mushrooms, wild greens, blackberries and wild onions can really stretch a food budget. We also know how to raise a few crops in some of the rockiest ground you can imagine. It all goes back to that independence we crave so much. Money and lavish lifestyles typically don't impress us. We have more respect for the man working at a sawmill than we do for the city boy driving a BMW. Hard work will always get more respect from a hillbilly than fancy toys. 1. Living in the hills. 2. Knowing how to fix what gets broken, especially if it has an engine. 3. Being patient enough to wait, vigilantly, for a whole day in a duck blind, a deer stand or a fishing spot because you can use the food. 4. Being just as patient with people. 5. Being willing to share half your last tank of gas, or half of your last sandwich, with the neighbor in need. 6. Never seeing anyone stranded on the road without offering help. 7. Getting up, whether with a hangover, the flu or a broken leg, in time to get to work at 6. 8. Sending your employee back home if he has the flu or a broken leg. 9. Loving God, country music and having a good time. 10. Making funnier, and realer, and nowhere near as nasty, jokes about city people than city people make about you. They prefer the term Appalachian American. A hillbilly were typically Scottish, Irish immigrants that settled in the rural areas of the Appalachian or Smoky Mountains. At times they were known living off the grid, self-educated, deeply spiritual, trappers by trade, and milled their own lumber. Over time they developed a working relationship with neighboring Native Americans, and at times intermarriages took place between the Appalachian Americans and Native Americans. They were also known for running moonshine. I suppose that depends on how you define hillbilly. My mother always referred to my father's family as hillbillies, but they didn't fit any of the stereotypes. They owned a farm that made enough money to support them. They had a pickup truck, but they had a car, too. They had all of their teeth and when they got older, they had dentures so they looked like they had all their teeth. They didn't wear cowboy hats or fly the rebel flag or even listen to country music, so all of the stereotypes of hillbillyhood didn't apply, either. But that was what my mother called them because their farm was up in the hills behind the town where her parents lived and she grew up. It all depends on your definition.